dear children, praise the Lord. It is Uncle Jack once again here. I hope you all doing well. I hope you had a lovely week. With me, I have a number of talented young people. Let's wave to our friends outside there. Yes, yes. We love you so very much. Um, we send greetings from our pastors. We send greetings from our deacon. They say they love you so very much. Amen. Uh, before we proceed, before we do any other thing, let's have ourselves and we pray. Hands together, eyes closed. Loving Father, we want to thank you for today. Thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning, Lord. We thank you for yet another opportunity that has presented itself, Lord, that we may worship and bless your loving name, Lord. We pray, King of Glory, that today may you grant us, Lord, our hearts and desires, Lord, according to your word and purpose for our lives, Lord. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Like I told you, today is an exciting day. We have a number of activities for you. Amen. Just put on your dancing shoes. We are going to have Uncle Jesse take us through a moment of jumpstart. Amen. Let me welcome Uncle Jesse to come and take us through. Uncle Jesse, you're welcome. Woo! I'm drowning in your love. Yes, Uncle Jesse is going to take us through a moment of jumpstart. Amen. Yes, join me there. Yes. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yes. Yourself. Uncle Jesse, take us through. We do what he does. Amen. Let's go. Let it flow. Ah, follow what he does. Just follow what he does. As he smiles. I'm drowning, I'm drowning in love. 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 I'm drowning in love. Yes. Love. Love, 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 love. Yes. We're drowning in love. Give me some energy. Oh. We're drowning in love. I think I know that style. Let me take it over from there. Oh. Hey. Uncle Jesse, thank you so very much. You can go. You can go back. Huh? Huh? Alright, love, 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 love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give the Lord of time to die and tell him time will time. Amen. Yes, without wasting any more time, I want to welcome the worship team to take us through a moment of praise and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give 
strong in battle. You've never lost the battle. That's why we choose to stand before you this morning, Lord. To give you all the praise. To give you all the honor and all the adoration, Lord God. There is none like you. None can contend with your power, Lord. None can take your place in our lives, King of Glory. We bless you. We honor you, Lord. We magnify you. Oh, there is none like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you, my master. Hallelujah. 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 Most. Hey, children of the Most High, I hope you enjoyed the session. It was a lovely session led uh, by our very own worship team here. We want to clap for them. Just give a hand offering to them. They have played us very well. We thank the Lord for this. Amen. Yes, we thank you for watching. Now, right about now, I want you to get your notebooks, get your pens, and get a glass of juice or a glass of water, perhaps, and sit right next to Daddy there. We're going to listen to the word. Amen. Right now, for us, we're heading to class. Bye-bye. See you next week. Praise the Lord, children. Welcome once again to uh, Sunday School. Uh, online service and I know that we have been missing but today God has made it possible uh, before we start can we pray father in heaven we thank you for today we thank you Lord for making it possible for us to uh, listen to your word we pray that you shall open our hearts that you shall open our minds and help us to understand what is being taught today in your mighty name I have prayed. Amen. So children, I don't know what, whether you can see what is in front of me, but I'm going to just raise it up for you to see. Do you see this? Do you see this? Yeah. Yeah, I believe that you understand what this is. Many of you love eating this for breakfast. Some of you love putting honey. Some of you like putting peanut butter. So I know that everybody has been able to understand what this is. And what is this? Yes, this is bread. And then I have a very interesting tin here as well. If you can see it, I can just bring it closer to the camera so you can see. Yeah. Do you see that very interesting uh, picture on this tin? And someone is holding something. Uh-huh. Does it ring a bell? Do you know what it is? Do you know, I believe that your mommy may have it in her kitchen. Yes, this is yeast. It is called yeast and it is made, it is used for making bread. It's used for making bread, but not only bread. It's also used for making some things like donuts. And many other things. Bakers no more. So today we are going to be talking a bit about this. About these two things. But before we go further. Does anyone remember what we learned um, in the previous Sunday? I hope you do. We were to we've been talking about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. And in the past Sundays we talked about having open minds, having softened hearts. Um, and we went on to learn about the parable of the soils. And when we learned about the parable of the soils, we learned that everybody reacts different. They react really differently when they hear the word of God. And some people react well. Some people uh, react well after some time the troubles of this world take over some don't even react at all you know the word of God comes and life goes on but as Christians and Christians that is you my friend and I we have to keep telling everyone that about Jesus whether we think their hearts are good soil or not now today what we are going to talk about is not very different 
um, from what we learned last Sunday. It's still talking about the kingdom of God. And it happened right after Jesus had explained about those four different soils. And there are about six, around six uh, parables. Today we are going to talk about three. And then next Sunday we shall talk about the other three. Now, the Bible tells us that the kingdom of God, it's not just a place. It is more than a place, okay? It's not a place that you go to. Um, and uh, Jesus talks about, when he talks about uh, the kingdom of God, he talks about a reign, about a reign. And I'm not, think, I'm not talking about rain that falls, hmm? that it's raining. No, there are different words, and I'm going to show them to you. Um, I hope I can get it very quickly. Yes. So do you see this word? R-A-I-N. R-A-I-N. This is rain, okay? And then we have another word. Also with the same pronunciation, but different spellings. Do you see this? R E I N. That is also rain. So when we are talking about the reign of the, the reign, the kingdom, we are talking about the second one, the R E I G A N. Okay? The rain. And when we talk about the rain, you should think about a crown because it reminds us about the kingdom. Okay? Now, a king will rule over his people. He will reign over his people. Yeah? And in this passage, when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and the Pharisees were asking Jesus about a place and a certain kind of rule that they expected, but Jesus surprised them and told them, no, the kingdom of, of heaven won't be a place that just shows up with trumpets, with banners, and knights in shining armor. No. He told them that the kingdom of God was already among them. The kingdom is, was already among them. And all those people who believe in Jesus, who follow him as their king, when they repent of their sins and give their lives to Jesus, then he makes, he makes you and I a prince and a princess. And then we are adopted by God when we believe in Jesus. Okay? So it is Jesus living in our hearts. The kingdom of heaven reigning, living in our hearts. Okay? So now we are going to turn to our Bibles and read. Still from Matthew chapter 13. Do you have your Bible with you? Do you have your Bible? I'll give you time to get your Bible, get your pen, get your notebook. Okay? And we are going to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24. Yeah, I'll just check very quickly. Verses 24 to 30. 24 to 30. Yeah? And I'm going to read. Here is another story that Jesus told. Yeah, the kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as the workers slept, his enemies came and they planted weeds among the wheat, then they slipped away. And when the crop began to grow and produce the grains, the weeds also grew. And so the farmers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, exclaimed the farmer. Should we pull out the weeds, they asked. No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles and burn them and to put the wheat in the barn. 
Children, have you ever been to a garden? I believe that you have been there and that you've seen the crop growing and then there are also weeds which have to be removed after a certain time. Because you know when weeds are in a garden, then the crops don't grow well. But in this case, the farmer said, no, leave them. Because if we take out the weeds, we shall also end up um, taking out the wheat, which we also need. Yeah? And this is one of the parables that Jesus explains, just like he did the parable of the soils. Yeah? So I am going to skip ahead and then we read what Jesus says um, the parable of the wheat and the weeds means. And so I want you to follow with me from Matthew, still chapter 13, verses 36 to 43. A lot of reading the Bible, but hey, what does our song say? Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. So we have to read our Bible. So are you there? Are you there? I am there. So, so here Jesus explains what the parable means. Yeah. Um, it says, then leaving the crowds outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, please explain to us the story of the weeds in the field. Then Jesus replied, the son of man is the farmer who plants the good seed. The field is the world. And the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy, the enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is, can anyone guess? Yes, it's the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the harvesters are the angels. So children, have you got some of that? It says the farmer is the son of man. He's the one who plants the good seed. The field is the world where we all are. The good seed represents the people of the kingdom. Is that you? I hope so. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. I don't want to say who, who, but we are going to read more about that. The enemy, the one who went in the night and started planting the weeds among the wheat is, let's say it together, the devil. And then the harvest, when they went and harvested all those things, that is the end of the world. And the harvesters are the angels. So just as the weeds are sorted and burned in the fire, that is how it will be at the end of the world. The son of man will send his angels and they will remove from the kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil my friends heaven is real hell is real we need to be good christians and we need to be part of the kingdom yeah and there are people in our in our lives every day who may not who do not follow jesus and they tease you or oh, you see this girl believes in jesus see this boy that's not cool How can you believe in jesus yeah but those are the weeds that Jesus refers to, yeah? Those are the weeds, and you should not allow them to choke you. You should not allow them to choke you, okay? We need to pray for everyone so that they can be saved. You should not get angry with them, but you need to pray with them, okay? So, this parable of the wheat and the weeds should teach us to pray. We need to pray for the weeds among us. Pray for them and make sure that they pray for them that they may have the soft hearts. Remember the soft hearts and stop having hard hearts and that they should stop teasing those who believe in uh, Jesus. 
Now, we are going to talk about the next parable. And this one is very, very, very short. Very, very short. It only has two verses. And that is from Matthew chapter 13, uh, still from verse 31 to 32. And here in my Bible, it has the title of the parable of the mustard seed. 31 says, another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Verses 32, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Okay? So there's a lot that we can learn from these very two simple verses. A mustard seed, it grows, becomes a very big tree. And then even the birds of the air, the birds come and rest there. Yeah? God can use small things to do great things. God can use small things to do great things. Okay? God got that tiny, I could not get a mustard seed. But just think of maybe a sim sim, that small sim sim grain, growing and becoming big and big. Yeah? And that's how the kingdom of heaven is. It started off very, very small. Started off very small. There were very few people who used to believe in Jesus, but now there are millions and millions of people all over over the world who believe in Jesus. And those people include me and you, okay? But it does not mean that now that you have believed in Jesus, you should also relax. No. God can use you small as you are to do big things and to bring people to the kingdom of God. So wherever you are in the market, with the border guy, with your friends playing, Tell them about Jesus, how good Jesus is, how good God is, how great the kingdom of God is. Now, our last parable for today, the very, very last for today, it only has one verse, only one verse, okay? And it's very similar to the parable of the mustard seed. And that's from Matthew chapter 13, verses 33. Matthew 13, verses 33. And that one is the one that tells us about this lovely, lovely thing that you guys love. So let's read from Matthew 13, verses 33, that says, Jesus used, also used uh, this. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permitted every part of the dough. Okay? Can anyone guess what they think this parable means? What does the, what does the yeast mean? What does the dough mean? Okay? Can anyone guess? I can imagine that you guys are guessing wherever you are. Yes! The flower represents the world, the flower, okay? And all the people in it. The yeast represents the Christians. Huh? Do you see how small this is? If I could open it and you could see how small the yeast is, you would be amazed. It's in this very small thing. You get just one teaspoon and it makes bread so big and lovely, okay? So, and, um, and yeast, I told you, is used for making bread. It makes the bread rise. And it makes it fluffy and delicious. Yeah? So just like yeast makes a difference in bread, even you, my, the Christian, you can make a difference in this world. And you can make the whole bread delicious. You can make the world a better place. Okay? So these parables that we have looked at today, we have learned that since we belong to the kingdom of heaven, 
we have to live like citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And we do that by praying. Okay? We pray for people who don't believe in Jesus. And by doing these little things, even very little things, we show that Jesus is our king. And we tell everyone that we meet that Jesus is king. Now, next week, we are going to look at three more parables that will again teach us what it means to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. So, my friends, we, have, we are going to stop here for today. And next week, we continue with three more parables. So, may God bless you and see you next Sunday. Bye. See you next Sunday. Bye.